On this episode of Super Tips, we're going to cover what happens when the supervisory committee and management disagree on an audit finding. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to the Super Tips show the place where supervisory committees and audit committees come to train. This is the only place dedicated to the training needs of supervisory committees. My name's Anson Cooley and I'm the principal at Synergy Credit Union Consulting and I'm your host. On this episode, we're gonna cover this very interesting topic as to what happens when the supervisory committee and the audit committee disagree. But before we get started, make sure you like this video and hit subscribe if you wanna see more of this same content. Let's get started. This is really a governance discussion. Really, who gets the right of way in a particular situation, okay? So let's just use um, uh, an example of a situation that I've dealt with in the past to kind of give you uh, a feel for how this would play out. Uh, I had a client that engaged an IT audit firm to conduct a general controls audit of their their systems okay so the supervisory committee outsourced this function to this IT audit firm now this particular credit union also had an internal auditor but that particular individual did not have the skill set to conduct this audit okay and so they they conduct the audit they send out the scope they send out a request list and once they're done one of the recommendations was that the credit union needed to replace their firewall and the firewall was going to cost the credit union about eighty thousand dollars okay so the management team said they disagreed with the finding completely and then in addition to that they didn't think that even if the finding was valid they didn't need a brand new firewall they could figure out some kind of workaround or they can find a cheaper option and so that's how management responded to this particular audit finding. And that's where we had that initial rub, okay? So who gets the right of way in this particular situation? Well, the supervisory committee chair asks for more information from the outsourced IT audit firm to just confirm whether or not the findings were accurate and whether or not the recommendation was reasonable. And then the supervisory committee chair conferred with the, his employee or the internal auditor to make sure that there was an understanding of the finding as well. Once all that process shook out, the supervisory committee chair said that he agreed with the finding. So now we have a situation where the CEO is standing by his IT officer saying that, hey, we don't need it. And now you have the supervisory committee chair standing by the internal auditor and the IT auditor saying, I think we do. So what do we do next? Well, the supervisory committee had actually attended one of our uh, courses and he gave me a call. And this is what I suggested that he do. I told the supervisory committee chair to write a letter explaining the situation to the board chair because at this point, this is about risk appetite and risk tolerance in that the supervisory committee has already done its job and fulfilled its duty in identifying the need for an additional control, okay? Management is saying from a risk standpoint, they're willing to accept the risk and they disagree with the finding. But the ultimate decision around whether or not we should move forward with the firewall or not rests with the board of directors. Anson, why? Because this is about risk appetite and risk tolerance, and that is set by your institution's board of directors. Okay. So, for example, the letter goes to the chair, and now the board as a group has to decide whether or not they want to accept the risk of staying with the current firewall system or mitigate the risk by purchasing the new system. At this point, there should be a motion on the floor after everybody's had an opportunity to speak and then it goes up for a vote. Either the vote will carry in that we will move forward and purchase the new firewall or the motion will 
the vote will uh, lose and we will keep the what we have in place. But after that point, we move forward. So again, how do you handle situations when there's disagreements between the management team and supervisory committee? You bring it to the board unless it is a clear cut regulatory issue around a specific law. If it's about risk, appetite and risk tolerance in terms of the board is saying we're willing to accept the risk of a particular area, the supervisory committee no longer, as my papa would say, has a dog in that hunt. Thank you for watching our show and please be on the lookout for our next episode, the three things every new supervisory committee member should do when they first step onto the committee. See you next time. Hello, my name's Anson Cooley and I'm the principal at Synergy Credit Union Consulting. Over the past 10 years, I've come to realize two things with regard to supervisory committees. Ever increasing responsibilities and not enough time or resources to effectively fulfill your duties. With this in mind, I decided to create the most comprehensive, effective, and fun supervisory committee course on the market. We accomplished this by listening to you. Over the past 10 years, I've had the privilege of teaching over 14 supervisory committee schools. With that experience, and the feedback from the attendees, we created this course. Our online course is comprised of five modules, complete with quizzes, bonus content, and instructor access. After taking this interactive course, you'll never settle for a webinar again. To register for the course, please click the link below, or you can visit us at thecomprehensivesupervisorycommittiecourse.com. We offer both individual pricing and group discounts. Thank you for your time and I'm looking forward to being your instructor.